Welcome to episode 10 of Two Beards and a Bachelor. We got a very special guest today. We say that for all of our guests, but this time we actually mean it. My boy Jason stopped in to the studio to be a guest slash stand-in for Dustin. Uh, technically, today it's uh, just going to be Two Beards. Yes. Uh, Jason's <laughs> he's got an epic uh, salt and pepper beard going on. I, I tell him I love it every time I see him. <laughs> My snack size beard. Jada's got the bigger one. I'll do. I'm trying yeah. to grow this thing out. But uh, so, if you're new to the show, feel free to go back and listen to any of the previous episodes. Uh, you won't be disappointed. Like, follow, and share the show with your friends. Uh, email us anything, subjects, uh, your uh, anything you want us to share. Email us at two band to be at gmail.com. That's t w o b a n d a b at gmail.com. Full disclosure, this show consists of a fair amount of explicit material and language that may be offensive to that Karen that lives across the street. That may be you. Go ahead and tune out now. That with Jason. Let's get it going. Two beards and a bachelor. This show's spectacular. It's two beards and a bachelor. Two thick one built like a spatula. Two beards and a bachelor. Good morning, Jason. How you doing? Good morning, Jay, man. This one from glad to be here, man. I've been wanting to come in and uh, sit in and see what's going on and uh, offer the opportunity to get behind the mic. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty awesome. Uh, don't get to do this very often, but it was cool about that week off. And taking a little break from the old work grind, so uh, off this week just chilling out. So now I'm going to sit in with these guys, see what's going on. Yeah. It's uh, a little chilly up here right now, but thank goodness it's not too cold outside. We're up in the, uh, in the above the garage. We got the heater going, but it ain't doing much. Yeah, yeah. well, for you know, I, I'm a little bit fatter on that side, so <laughs> it's great for me. The cooler the weather, the built in insulation. That's right. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we got Jason came in, sat in for us. Uh, one fire decided not to show up again. Uh, Dustin's on vacation, which is understandable. He, he gave us a heads up, so we knew we knew he wasn't going to be here. But uh, oh, Lord, fire! We're going to have to check his contract. We might have to, we might have to cut his pay a little bit. But uh, but uh, Jason qualifies. He's got a pretty sweet beard, so it's just going to be two beards this morning, I guess. But uh, so for the people that don't know who you are, Jason, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Jason. I'm, you know, just an old man, that uh, dad, father. I got two boys. They're crazy. You know, they're 19 and 15, so I'm in them teenage years. So it's a whole different mechanism to parenting. You know, there's a lot more cuss words and less uh, babying than it was when they was little. So uh, do you, you let know. your kids cuss? Uh, they don't cuss in front of me. Okay. They just, uh, they, I, I know that they will drop them because, yeah. you know, like when my oldest one, he's my wild child. He's like, you know, he's more like me than his mother. And my youngest one looks like me, but he acts like his mother. He's very, very meek, very calm. And uh, my oldest one's not like, he's the poster boy according to his ADH doctor when the school forced us to take him and have him like tested. So they were like, you can either test him or we got to put him somewhere else. So we took him, we took him there. It's hilarious, man. We go in there and we, we went through like seven doctors because we went through these guys that were just writing out like prescriptions. As soon as 10 minute talks, we'll, we'll give him this. And it's like, nah, we, we're going to try, you know, get to the bottom of it, see if it's really what it sucks it is. when they just, you know, they they try to diagnose a problem and just throw pills at it. Yeah. It's like, why don't we just take that energy and figure out how to channel it? Right, because he's got something special. We just had to find it. You know? Right, I don't want him to turn into a zombie. Exactly, he's hyper. Yeah, let's use that energy towards something instead of dampering it down. That's right. That's 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 kind of how we pointed out things as. But I, I remember the last doctor. He's actually with our pediatrician practice, and uh, he went out on his own because he has ADHD. And uh, himself, he, he, you know, he told us that going into it, he, he had all these new tests and stuff, and they put him in this room, and they put this thing on his head, like he had to answer these questions on a computer, and it's like 20 minutes, which for him, that's a really, really long time to be sit to sit yeah. and focus. So he comes in, and they get done, and uh, comes out, and they show us the graph. It's kind of like you know, sound bites. It's, it's a you know, 
bar graph with squiggles and like when he's logged in it's a steady line and they had like above it was like normal people like you know and it's just like a little wave going through there and then there's my son and it's like it's a little wave and then it's like shong, shong, shong. Yeah, this goes way up and way <laughs> down and way all over the place and he's wow. like I was, and then he says at one point he goes you can see you got about 10 minutes into it and then he was kind of like fuck this so yeah. he just started answering c to everything we know because he's out like 18 minutes that's what i used to do on the old scan trials yes c means yes in spanish Ah, fuck it. Whatever. If you don't know, just throw a C. Oh, yeah. I laugh so hard because Dr. Luke does. He says, most kids that come here just need, like, structure and discipline. Like, there's re- re- repercussions for what or you do. something they're interested in. Right. You find them a place. I guarantee you there's something you can find that he'll just lock in. Right. And that little squiggly line will go low. And you're like, damn, I think we found something. Yeah. You know, if it's, you know, cars. If it, they start talking about classic cars and it goes from zigzags to zzz, right, ooh, I think he likes that. Yeah, that's like with him. That's what you know. One of the things with ADHD, and I was one of those guys that was like, ah, oh, man, no, I just, you know, that's just stuff, you know, whatever. You can focus. Right, on. It just needs to exercise. Yeah, yeah. That's my dad. Go run around the damn house. Exactly. Few times. Calm your ass down. <laughs> exactly. And then we, you know, with him, we just put him in there with his daughter. It was like most kids come in there's like a two, you know, scale one to ten, four, top end. And uh, he says, like, your son's like, nah, I was like, really? He's like, I usually don't even prescribe medication, change the diet, cut it out on some things, and uh, give him structure. Like, that's what we're going to do. The more structured things are, the better operators have him. All that's out there. He says, we're going to use a little bit of medication. And uh, he says, but we're going to, like you said, we're going to find some things. He says, you got to focus in on what he likes to do and what he's constantly. You know, we played sports all the way up. It was really good. Was trying to freaking nuts and like baseball you know he's a long ball guy now this is yeah. the kid that right now he's what six three six four yeah he's right at like six four two thirty yeah yeah football coach is like he hit that about 11th grade year he's just put him shot up and uh, he played all the way up till eighth grade eighth grade he was like bro he told his coaches, like, and you gotta know my son, he's big uh, sportsman, you know, hunting and fishing is his thing. That's where that's what he dives in. And uh, so he told his coach at the end of it, his coach was all excited. He did come out for like night grade football. And he was like, Why is he not out? And he's like, dude, he's like, Y'all just, I can't get in deer stand. Give me practice to start. So I'm done. He runs right into it. I'm not doing this anymore. He's like, that, that means so much for people. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, as you as you get older, your friendship will go down. Yeah, you know, that's what I always tell my boys. I say, right now you're in that prime of the friendships and stuff like that. I says responsibilities take over. You know, that's, that that's stuff's out the window, man. You, know, you gotta yeah, pull your daily grind. You're doing family. You got family. Babies. Yeah. Your yeah. job's gonna take you different places. You right. Know, we need you to move. Right? Yeah. You think you could relocate for us? Right. Or if you, we've got an opportunity, but it's in Alabama. Right. Just like, shit, do I stay here and yeah. keep working this nine to five, or you know, can I go run a facility in Alabama? Yeah. Or whatever it may be. That's, I got mad respect for people who are in that line of work that have to transfer around and yeah. stuff like that, because that's, especially if you got family, because you got to think, you know, okay, they got to take school. So like, you know, I've talked about it. I moved around and I went to like 12 different schools growing up. Now you got social media will kind of help you stay connected somewhat. Right. You know, even if back in the day, man, if you were, if you moved away, that was it. That was it. That was a lot of rap. And, uh, but the cool thing about it is, I guess, like when we moving around so much as I, I always kid us, I got a couch anywhere in the state of South Carolina. Nice. You know what I'm talking about? I can go, I'm, and we talk about it all the time. I'm always like, yeah, you look like we go through a town. I was like, and uh, we used to come here to do this. It's just, where have you lived in this state? Like, uh, we've lived pretty much all over it, you know. Not exactly in every town, but like in the vicinity. So, and it was pretty cool to hear about and, and that respect for growing up people and stuff and the stories. You know, just experience. And stories. Yeah, it is. You know, dude, <laughs> always kids just in this state, there's such a different uh, culture between different areas of the state. You know, you got the upstate. Yeah, the middle of the state. In your case, the, the 
the boys that grew up on the shore. Yeah, and you got, you know, co- what they call it, coastal plains. And you got low, we call it low country and we call it Columbia. Yeah, that's always the middle of the state. No matter where you live in the middle of the state, it's called Columbia. Right. And, and, uh, then uh, the upstate where I'm originally from, the, the ground clips, so about 15 minutes from the university that our home is. Uh, my mom, where she lives now, moved back in our family and all that stuff. But they, uh, <laughs> But yeah, lived all over the state. There's so much difference between like you know the cultures and the way people go about doing things. Because you got like the agriculture districts, you got the business districts and stuff like that. So and then you got the coast where it's just a mess of people from all over. But kind of like that's how it forms your personality and your character is who you're around, certain uh, things that you go through. You know, just it's you know. You're a certain person in the beginning, but given like your experiences, or what they say, uh, show me your five closest friends, and I'll show you what kind of person you are. Right. You know, because you are the company you keep. You, know, you can't help it. Yep. You know, that's typically, you know, if you meet like your brother or your sister, they're always like, oh man, they're just like you. Yeah. And it's like, well, we haven't lived together a whole lot. We <laughs> spent all our time together. Yeah. <laughs> Put up with that shit, you uh, you you kind of grow together. But yeah, it changed. You know, I kid about perspective. Where are you from? Yeah, you know, if you live like I, I like I tell my boys, I said you got a singular perspective on things. You live in one area and one time. Like, and we'll talk about stuff political or you know just local stuff about you know somebody's this and that. We kid about it all the time. Is uh, I said you have one view of things because of where you're at and how you're raised. I said for me bouncing around is I got different views on things like my friends are all over spectrum when it comes to like politics, religion, and stuff like that, all things you're not supposed to talk about. They they're all over the place. So so you're talking about social media earlier. You know, when I get on there and post something, you know, it it it's gonna have like ridiculous comments because of people I have in my spectrum. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I got some men that are, you know, just you know, they, they would they are really far left and i got others that are really far right and i love all of them like if all y'all get your shit together it would be all right you post yeah. some good stuff too it's, it's like most of your posts or you can tell that you've got a wide spectrum because it's very like there's some of them that you know most people post like maybe two sentences yeah but some of your posts will be dialogue like, yeah it'll be like a number like one, two, three, four, five. And if you're willing to sit in yeah. and read, it's good stuff. I break like all the rules of social media. Really thought it through, though. Yeah. Like, uh, you posted something about what's the dream. Yeah. The and I was like, I had to show my wife. Yeah. I was like, Jason Nix done stole our dream. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, you know, you, 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 it, I guess it comes with experience and, and stuff like that. In the times. In the times. Shit's happening. Yeah. I wish. You know, we live in a kind of a small city, right. this county, but it's all you almost find yourself. Well, I don't know, if me and you probably similar. You just want to move further out. Yeah, it's just like the further I can get away from Charlotte, those right. big cities, because those if the shit hits the fan, those people are trapped. Yeah, you know, and you just want to be left alone. Just you know, I don't need much. Yeah, I don't ask for much. Just leave me alone. Yeah, you know, that's the dream. Me and my family. Yeah. I want to be self-sufficient. Right. You know, right. I want to right. learn how to hunt. I want to learn how to farm. That's the same thing with us. We told our kids, right. like, look, you don't have to move out. Yeah. You know, now you're going to be right. productive. Right. You ain't just going to be right. playing Fortnite all day. day. Yeah, basically. You go, we go, I want to learn how to farm. Yep. I want to learn how to hunt. Yep. And I want you to want to learn, you know. Right. It feels good as a dad to be a provider. Right. But, you know, I feel like sometimes if I didn't have the job that we have, I wouldn't be much of a provider. Right. It's like, you know, if this was gone, what would I do? What can I have to offer? Yeah. I don't know how to plumb. Right. I don't know how to hunt, farm. You know, it's like, shit. You start thinking about that, especially doing what we do. Yeah. Typically, you're out there thinking all day. Yeah. A lot of down a long time. That's oh, where, but the, that's right. That's you know, I, I grew up uh, from a long line of like my grandfather, you know, both my grandfathers, and uh, those are different. That's a different kind of, you know, 
a uh, like my on my mom's side. He was a gunner and he saw some tough stuff. Never talked about. It. We had very little stories till Alzheimer's table mm-hmm. took over, and then he would tell stories. He never talked about the war ever. Right. Never seen it. So medals, nothing. All this stuff was stored in the box. No pictures, closet. no nothing. Nothing. Damn. Just straight up, but he in the end started telling the stories yeah. and stuff like that. And we were like, he was in some of the nastiest fights. And then he come home and uh, had nine children and farmed and worked in the mill on the third shift, raised a family, farm, built almost every structure on his property himself. And stuff like that's so gone, you know. If, 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 and now it's like that's what I told the boys. I said we had we got to bring that stuff. Right, you know, people were just, you know, and you said it best. You know, if we didn't do what we do, what what do we have to offer? It was tough because it, you know, we're blessed with the job that we have, right. given both of our uh, education exactly. and history. We just got—I don't know how you fell into it, but I, it just kind of tripped up in my life. Me too. Might as well stay here because good benefits. Then you start having babies, and yep. damn, it's what do they call it, golden handcuffs. Yeah. Stuff. And you're just like, damn, I wish I knew how to farm because, uh, like you said, like my grandfather was a B-2 bomber yeah. in World War II in Vietnam. And then my uncle uh, was in Vietnam, Okay, but uh, he was the oldest, so I think he got caught up in the draft. Yeah. Um, I'm terrible with history. Yeah, but, my uh, dad, he was uh, drafted, went in, and he blew his knee playing football in high school, and that's why he got but They were like rules to the draft. Yeah. yeah, like he got exempted. Uh, but I think if you were the only son, yeah. you couldn't get drafted. Right. Or but the old or the youngest or something like the that. The youngest. Uh, my uncle was the oldest of five, so yeah. he went. Yeah, my dad had a brother, so they were he he got drafted him somebody they they way explained to me something about his knee wouldn't pass, he couldn't get through the physical yet, so whatever that is. But but yeah, it's crazy when you think about it. But that kind of stuff, like you said, the, we are fortunate in that part of it. Um, I did fall into mine. It was, it was a, I come back from spring break um, How old? in college. I was 18 and a half, I guess you say. And I turned 19 and I almost started in July in Florence. Uh, come back from spring break. It was uh, out of money, normal, because I tried to work all summer at the beach, hustle, tan. whatever I had to you do. You had that tan going yeah. on. Come in and that I was good like. Good hairline. Six, no, yeah, those days are gone. <laughs> Yeah, like I could, I had like ten bucks to my name when I got back from spring break for you know partying and all that stuff. And I, one of my fraternity brothers was like, "Hey man, uh, we're going. I got this place, man. I work up there. All we do is throw boxes." He says, "You just throw the boxes, and uh, they pay." You. It's like it's like working out without the gym membership. That's how I used to pay. Yep. Yeah, so but work at like four in the morning. I was like, "Oof." <laughs> Who gives up that damn man? I'm usually just coming in. And because, uh, like I said, I wasn't a role model college student. I, I took to the party inside better than I did the education side. And uh, granted, that um, I was that guy that rushed the fraternity, but I never paid my dues. Like, well, my GPA was so bad that I couldn't rush. Yeah. And I, I had, I don't even know how it was pop. My problem was I just never showed up. Because when you're a freshman, yeah. you had the worst pick of all the classes. Yeah. So all your classes were like 8 a.m. Yeah. And like you said, you're coming in at 4 a.m. Yeah. Your ass ain't getting up to bed. And I was staying at home. Right. So I was a commuter. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had a point six GPA. Yeah, that was like me first semester. And it got so bad to where my guidance counselor was like, baby, it's going to take you years to pull this up. I was like, so basically I'm screwed? She was like, you might want to learn a trade. Yeah. You know? She <laughs> said, so what'd she say? She looked me in the eyes and she said, no, they do need people to dig ditches, baby. Yeah. I said, God damn. You right. look strong, boy. You got a strong yeah. back. How's your back? <laughs> yeah, that's so. Uh, that was pretty much the same situation for me. I was like, like I said, I was at Florence. I was and, 18. Uh, yeah. I took this, yeah, I worked there, worked a few months, but they hired me for my kid. Right. So, but I was still in school, so I was like, dude, I ate in the summer. And, so it, it, they worked it out as back in the day before it was, you know, what it is today. And then uh, I come to Rock Hill, was going to winter, and I never forget the same story sitting there when the guys canceled. That's where I was at. And uh, I was still working. I, you know, I, I was I was doing some like air stuff. And then uh, 
after the swords and it, they offered me a full time gig and called me if you want a full time driver. Now did you have to be twenty one? Yeah. Okay, so you so I was yeah, yeah, I had done uh move yeah, I I right. did I don't think I started driving until like twenty two. No, right at twenty one, right after I turned twenty one. And I made the problem was I was I had, I had a perfect setup. I didn't want to full time drive. I wanted to I had I was running a sore shuttle to Columbia. Yeah stuff like that but i was making too much money so they made me a drop and it's like you can't be part-time yeah. this. and i couldn't get along killing for anything because I, on paper i'm part-time so anyway long story short all that when driving and uh, i remember I, I went to the guy because i was still in school so i went to the guy's counselor and said yeah you, you really need to take that job i was like what's what we need she's like she would not well, that's a good guy yeah she was honest yeah She's like, you got really it. need to just stick with that. And it's a good college. So do it. I was like, good, great, whatever. Bye. Can I get some money back? But it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot in the summertime. <laughs> and I, oh, yeah, it's hot. It's great. It can, it so can when, when did you meet your wife? Oh, God, it was like I took a semester off school because I was fucking up. You know, I was down there just partying. Because I come from, I, that's what I, you know, my sister says. Man. She says, you lived a wild life from 18 because of living on the coast. I moved out um, the day I graduated, like the day I went to my graduation. I um, didn't even go to my graduation party because I had to go to work. And yeah. I, you know, we were broke. Oh, man, the ministry don't pay, bro. I'm just telling you, don't pay. So my parents, you know, they, they uh, the finances were not always great. And, uh, but we lived a good life. It wasn't, you know, finances were never talked about. And, uh, but you know, as you got older, you can tell, you know, when to ask, when not to. Well, my so, dad say, uh, money ain't everything, but it does make things a lot easier. A lot easier. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it solves some problems. Right. And, uh, but anyway, they, I left and I had a job. I was a lifeguard and at the beach. Oh, oh this is one yeah. of the best jobs I've ever had. Now, I didn't like guard at the beach. Yeah. Mine was at community pools. So. Right. Well, it's basically, I, I lifeguarded <laughs> at, at, at a water park. And, nice. Uh, oh, yeah, it was wild. And they had like, Wow! Shout out! Wild wow, water and wheels. Yeah. They plug. They, then it's not wheels anymore. It's just wild water. They had to get rid of the go karts because people, you know, wreck them, sue and stuff like that. So, and I had to get to work that night because I was running go karts because it kind of went back and forth and stuff like that when we first started. And I moved down there. Lived in a trailer park place like they had at the beach back then. Yeah, there's a trailer park community. And a buddy of mine's parents home. And uh, we lived down there for like two hundred. Now, did you do the, did you have like a bachelor pad or did you and a couple of buddies go together? Yeah, it was me and one other dude. It was his parents' place, but they, they charged us for it. Okay. And uh, that summer. Now, the next summer, oh my God. I lived, uh, with me and three other dudes were going to lease an apartment. Nice. Right. And uh, they lived down there, but they didn't want to live at home, so they were going to lease it with me. And it fell through, you know, that bunch of dumb asses. <laughs> Just, we we didn't get our stuff in and cereal time. off a of paper plate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we didn't live. There. I ended up having to like scramble because I had a job, but yeah. I didn't have anywhere to stay. So right. there were some other friends from high school that rented another trailer. It's sock steam. You know, sock steam means an Indian, right? No, redneck. That's that's, ah. that's funny. It's, it's a, it is <laughs> this trailer part was like this big like horseshoe, and uh, it was like a thousand trailers. In just butted up each other. If you have never lived in a trailer park and had the beach, it's a sock of these textbook trailer park. Oh my God, it was fantastic. I mean, you saw shit you would never believe in your life. We had this one trick chick that liked to walk around naked in the bottom oh. of the park. It's crazy. Now, yeah, was, uh, was that a good thing or a bad thing? It was terrible. I was oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was was like, God, yeah. It was terrible. On the surface, you're like, nice. And then yeah. you think about it, you're like, uh, it was nothing you wanted to see. It was like a hard. Well, there was like seven of us. Put six. your clothes on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was like six or seven of us living in this trailer. Darlene's out there again. Look, yeah, look at her. <laughs> she got double D's, but they hit the knees. Oh. oh, it was yeah, it was wild. They had this one cat man. We lived in this trailer. His buddy of ours had a uh, thing, and he uh, he was in there. And I called him. I was like, "Man, can I can I get can I get a room?" And he's like, "Yeah, we got this. Not a room, but it's kind of like a room." I was like, "What is it? like this? We're washing machine." 
I don't wash the machine, but wash and dryer and okay. But they got this other place where they're actually at, so you can rent it. I'm like, cool, so I come. It's basically a fucking closet. It was, it was not a room. It was a door that was like a damn linen closet, it felt like, but you could throw like a college dorm mattress in there. And I did, you know, I never stayed there really. A prison mattress? <laughs> it's one of those, just basically. That's what I had in the floor. And uh, 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 my I traveled like two hefty garbage bags that all I, I nice. had of stuff, and uh, and we <laughs> but we lived there is like me, one, two, three, four, five other people wow. in like a three bedroom trailer, but none of us were ever like there months, right? Like somewhere, me, I just somewhere to crash. Yeah, I just passed out. Like my stuff stayed there, like my clothes, which wasn't a whole lot. It was just like shorts and t-shirts. But everything stayed in my car, like backup clothes, because I'd pass out whenever I party at that time. I never left. Had my car impounded all the fucking time. I'd have to go. I mean, you're on a first name basis at the end town, where they would just tow my damn car. Like three tow companies knew me by name. Oh. It was, it's like, dude, I quit parking your fucking car. No parking places. It's the only learn? place to park. Where are you going to learn, boy? It's the beach. Why don't you know just bring it back to the house? Quit fucking. <laughs> Taking it down here. Just start giving you cash. Oh, that's what we did. Something. Like this one lady, Miss Smith, Susie, Smith. I can't remember. It's something with it is. Um, at one of the impound lots, she, uh, I just gave her fifty dollars. It's like a hundred and thirty dollars car. VIP pass. <laughs> She's like, you fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know that's what she was saying. You're just, you're dumb. Again, you gotta get it out. Yeah. Of, it's better to get it out of your system now it was. than to be some forty-year-old man that's Trying drunk, to... passing out of his buddy's man, house. Life crisis. If you, how old is he? Ah, he's like twenty. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, was, boy. that was man. That, was those learned. two summers, I probably got all and yeah. much stupid shit out of my system because yeah. I could. I had. I always uh, told this one story. Where I went to a party, North Myrtle Beach, Ontario. And I woke up the next morning in um, Asheville. Ooh. No, Wilmington. Wilmington. Okay. Yeah, Wilmington. One beach to another beach. Yeah, that's what it is, Wilmington. And, uh, that's a military town. I don't know what town it was. All I know, you know how when you wake up from being out partying all night and trashed and you're hungover and you're like trying to get your bearings? And that was be like 93% of the time those two songs. I wake up and like, fucking home. My own cars, if I ain't you, you know, stuff like that. And uh, we, I woke up and it was like a room, three or four people. I don't know who the hell they are. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> they said, <laughs> <laughs> one ain't cuddled up to you. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, oh, God. I reached over here. I'm like <laughs> checking my britches to make sure. Oh, no. Yeah, and I go outside on like a little balcony thing. And I'm like, fuck. Where is the, I don't recognize anything. None of that. I was like, oh, fuck. What have I done? <laughs> I couldn't have drove here. My car's in town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, how did I get here? So I go back in. I just, you know, I, and I, I just sat there and waited for everybody to kind of come to their mirror. Because your head's pounding. Yeah. And they're like, dude. Like, oh. Dude, I, <laughs> you were fucking crazy last yeah, night, bro. <laughs> It's like it's you said, you. fuck it, you, you said, you, oh, I, I can't remember what it is, like, fuck it, man, you just wanted to get a ride with us, you hadn't been to Wilmington, <laughs> thought it'd be cool. We came back last night, it's like, oh, we came all the way to Wilmington, I like, so, got Will for a day when I'm right, drinking, of course. Then I had to, like, get them to take me back to the beach. Dirty Myrtle, man, it's not what it used to be, you know, I, I lived down here, it was a little uh, less violent. I guess you could say. So. Well, I was talking to somebody about this at the gym. Um, it's almost like uh, people from this area go, they like to go to Virginia Beach. Because yeah. I'm from Virginia. Okay. And it's exactly the opposite. Up in Virginia, they like to come oh, down to Maryland. Ohio. What? And Ohio. And Ohio. Oh, fuck yeah. Every weekend, man, it's like, you, you have to ask. Like, where are you from? Ohio. They're from Ohio. It's like Ohio and Myrtle Beach is like yeah. the, cap, the second capital of Ohio. Like the country boys. They come down. I like your accent. Yeah, I like your accent. So we <laughs> used to kids about- like re, re, replenish the stock every week because oh. you know, a new group would come in. 
you can tell all kind of lies and stories. Of course. Yeah. Make up a name. Yeah. What do you do for a What do you do for a I slap I'm, sharp. I do whatever your wife does. Yeah, exactly. I rope cattle yeah. four days a week. Yeah. Look at these four old. Look at these dudes. big old cams. But yeah, man, it was it was, it was wild down there, man. I like I was, ah, the parties we went to. We we were like the kings of hustle yeah. when I was a kid. Like we'd go to keg parties and the back of the car we'd have like all the colors of solo cups that were making the time. I think it was like two. It's not like now we got radio. Yeah, like blue and red. And that was it. So we'd go and like all oh, the people who were having a party would sell the cups for like five bucks. Like you come in and drink all you want, but they only have like two kegs. So five bucks is going to get you like two cups if there's a hundred people there because those are probably cap out in yeah. no time. So we show up, go to the other side of the party, so for like three. And then we make our money, to drink their beer, yeah. and then cut out. Awesome. Yeah. And then our, my favorite one we would do, we'd go to Dixie Stampede and shit like that. But in front of every resort, hotel, whatever you stayed in, they'd have those like brochures for discounts for like 10 bucks a week. Get drunk, go eat at the plantation pancake house. Man, y'all got to cut me some checks. But uh, <laughs> I, we'd go eat there at like 3 a.m. Yeah. and grab a bunch of those brochures, go Friday, Saturdays when they'd have the big shows at Dixie Stampede, and go in the parking lot and sell them. Fifteen dollars off. Okay. People's on vacation. They got money to burn. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they would do. Pocket full of cash, man. Yeah. Oh shit! I'm getting this. This guy's like that. Hey. in the front of your resort. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get that money. Made it there once money. they see it. <laughs> that little son of a bitch, <laughs> motherfucker. I'm gonna find him. Yeah. You wait till I get this ass. I'm gonna whoop him. Long like, gone. No, you're not. Bill <laughs> Team Six. You're just gonna. Bill Team Six. Right. But yeah, that was one. And then I tell you the. the the, sh- the little bastards that were at the pier all the time, the little kids, these are like the local, like original local kids. Oh boy. 10, 8 to 10, 12 years old, rode bicycles up here. That's when uh, Garden City Pier had a big uh, concert, not concert, arcade, like at the end of the pier. It's huge arcade, right? Like all the games. Big then was Mortal Kombat. That was. I don't know why they didn't like arcade. Oh my God. Was that not the best? And these little, these little shit, that's when you. For to date myself, that's when you had you didn't have cell phones, you right? Had, uh, pay me that's point, right? These little bastards would go out there on the pier, and all the people come, it's like, Hey, uh, I need a quarter to call my mom. Come, people go, Oh, and it's not okay, there. sweetie. Everybody don't have, I mean, how many people carry a quarter, right? You know, they give them a dollar, Ooh. they go and change it out, play freaking video games nice. all night. They make 30, 40 dollars a year, you know. Well, I'm working at this water park, right? There was this daycare that these little bastards went to, their parents sent them to. Well, all they did was buy season passes to the water park. Those chicks would bring the kids to the water park, turn the fucking people loose, and go tan. And they were the worst. Yeah. I mean, they hated me because, yeah. like, when I come there, I make them little bastards sit on the edges of the pool yeah. at the stand when I'd rotate the guards around. And I'd sit there, I was like, yeah, I mean, fuck, they are not leaving my side. They were elbowing kids in the like grottos, like the rock caves that people walk through. They'd climb up in the rocks and jump off on top of them. Good and lord. They were demons, man. I always kid, I was like, you bastard, you're all gonna sit beside me. And they would they'd be mad. They'd see me coming there and start trying to scramble. They'd be running, oh man. Oh, you got the whistle so, when you got the power. Yeah. I'd bring them in there. You get you right here. Right here. I'd have them all sitting there and uh, yeah, it was that. It was, it was hilarious. Those, little, those kids were horrible. They were the best hustlers, though, man. They could hustle you out of anything. They would hug. They, the funny thing was, like, they'd take them to, like, the little canteen area, and the, they'd go eat there. They'd either bring their lunch, the girls would go get them. And I was always having fuss with, like, the women that brought them in there because they would break all the rules, too. Like, back then, you couldn't have, like, thong bikinis. Like, there was a Myrtle Beach statue. And, yeah. yeah. They'd come to the water park, and there it is. I'm fine with I'm perfectly okay. As long as I got my sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all can get, and, but I had, they'd always send me over there. They'd be like, go over there and talk to them. I'd be like, look, look, look. Yeah. it's fine with me. I'm sure it's fine with 90% of the male population. That's in this <laughs> but, I got a job here. Yeah, police say you can't. So you got to put so go get a kid. If, like, don't go up in there, or you got to go and you got to take these sunglasses with you. Right. So, can't move. It's so dangerous. 
so irresponsible of these girls. But that was, you know, we were basically, they were, that was genius. I mean, think about it. You brought those kids there. They had full-time supervision right. from all the guards. I mean, you had a hundred guards. And they got to take it. Wow. And got them together for lunch. And they're paid. Then about 3.30, they'd gather all the devils. Go. Up. Yeah. We out. We go. And I threw them out one time. And they're wore out when their parents come oh, back. Exhausted. I love seeing you there. You always come back. Y'all call. Yeah. Ready to take a nap. I threw I threw them out one time. How do you keep getting sunburned? Those kids, they live on the beach. Like half of them surf. You know, oh, you'd wow. see them out surfing and stuff too. And uh, the meanest shit, you know, just, I mean, local kids at the beach are awful. I mean, they're just you can't. Yeah, because they can't. Man. This is all. It's turf. You know, it's, it's it's surf, it's surfers. Surfers all the time. Yeah, you deal with them, and you just learn to be a little fight ass. So <laughs> they would. I mean, it flipped me off. They see me on the street, like down at night at like the pier and stuff. They just be like. <laughs> That's one of the things you don't see these days is kids just rolling, running wild. Yeah. Like you see a kid that's under 10 these days, and you're like, what? I think they're girls. What? You're just letting them walk around? Just run around crazy. Like, oh. We, we always go to this fruit island about every year. Now it's like every other year. We try to get down to Florida somewhere. And, uh, I got a big group. That yeah, it's play. like a gang. Like our all our kids grew up together. Right. And uh, they grew up playing ball. Just community, and we're a small community right here, right? So. And we go down there, and it's a hell of a time. I mean, it's, it's just all the kids grew up when they were little, it was wonderful because they could play with each other, ride the bicycle, and all right, I'd have those they had the helicopter bombs yeah. hitting around there. I was like, I can't believe it. Don't just careful, careful, don't do that. Yeah, don't, don't, don't touch that. I can't believe you just like ride around the island by itself. It's like it's fucking seven miles, yeah, tops. and their security. On the island, like everywhere. And if you're a weirdo, right. people are already like, oh, yeah. And you, you can't get on the island without a two day stay. Right. You can't just like hop in for the day and stuff like that. Not saying something will happen. I'm not naive to that. But he yeah. had, he knew where he was at. He knew where he was doing. And uh, he had his own phone because of it. And uh, he'd get down there. But the funny thing about it, we get down there, and, like, he knows everybody on the pier or, or uh, the little pier they had. We go down there, like, oh, you must be Jacob's dad. Mm-hmm. But I don't know you. Yeah. He's like going there. I was like, Dave, he goes, watch this. He said, it's going to get hot here in a little bit. He said, these cats will start bending down. I'll get all the bait hanging with my bait. Nice. And they would have been like, Dave, you want this bait? We're going home. And he, oh, he would rack up. Because he'd carry, he had this little like cooler he zip tied to his damn bike that he would rent down there. And uh, he'd pack it with ice and stuff like that. Now they just, you know, still be around with cooler. That's what the last time we were down there, that's what we were talking about there. I said, look, I know, I know, I said, if your mama has, I'll stole this. I ain't said nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm on her side. Mr. Nick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I said, I'm going to be right here with him. Whoop his ass. Looking over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell y'all. I told you. Whoop <laughs> But yeah, they were the kids. It's, it's a group of them. They had a ball the last time we was down there because now they're all in that like senior, between senior and graduate. So they're, uh, they're, they, it was hilarious to have out there doing their thing. And uh, it was good to see. I remember the first night we got out there, they were like, hey, man, can I, can I walk over to the coolers? Because we care about the big coolers. I was like, you can get the little, the little road. I said, just take you. I said, but, you know, I don't know what y'all going to put out there. Y'all going to put Capri Suns in the bag. I said, if they ask, man, I'm going to be like, I, I told them they use cool. You should be badass kids. So, and uh, yeah, so they, they one night, you know, they were hammered, slammered, and stuff. So it well, was, it's good. It's, it's, it was, you, you want to, that, I think college is uh, it's a shock to most kids. Yeah. And uh, it, you almost want to ease them into it. Right. And that's, you know, when I was little, my dad, you know, would come running up, you know, 13, 14. Oh, what you got in the cup? Yeah. Like, Take your sip. See how that works like, out. <laughs> you know, it's disgusting. <laughs> yes. It is. You don't want that. No, don't drink my cup. Yeah. You know, and it's, then you get to that age where you're like, oh, no, I'm going to try it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's better to be easy. If, if you can if you can turn anything for a kid into taboo, that right. almost makes them want to do it. Drives them toward it. If yeah. you tell them. If you give them an ultimatum, it's like, no matter what, don't you ever do that. And it, it makes them want to do it more. Right. 
it's kind of like guns or alcohol, any of that. If you show it to them, they'll try it in a in a, a controlled environment. It, it there's a higher chance. I'm not saying that it won't, but later down the road, they won't go off the rails. Right. You know, people. Oh, if you let them, if you let them drink as a teenager, they're gonna be an alcoholic. Like I don't know about all that. Yeah, that's you know, I agree with you 100. percent Is the more exposure too. you have to the most exposure you can have a kid into to a realm like you said, control. Okay, you see the benefits of this, and you see what can't happen. Right. You know what I mean? Because the stories are gonna come. You're gonna have somebody that's gonna fuck up, mm-hmm. you know, and make a mistake, and, and um, the consequences. That's what I always try to teach you, man. There's consequences. If you want to, if you want to do something, there's consequences everything, to everything. It. Yeah, good or bad. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. If you work hard, there's consequences. You know, you want to. There's pros and cons. If you if you bust your tail and you put in the hours, you're going to have to give them something else, like either a family time, personal time, things you want to do, hobbies. Um, if you're trying to reach a goal, sometimes you got to do that. And also, there's a benefit from it. It's a little bit bigger. You're able to accomplish the goals you want to have. You're moving forward and things. You gotta find that balance. Right. You gotta find a place where, you know, I I kid now, people say, you know, you work a lot. I was like, it's part of the career path I chose. But I do work a little bit extra. But on the side of it is I spent the early part of my kids' life when they needed dad their dad. Yeah, when they say yeah. uh from zero to four, right, is like key. And after four, they're it, it's almost like they're not a kid anymore. Or they're not a they're not a toddler. That's when they the sponge is gone. Right, right, and that's when they start, you know, learning and trying different stuff. And right. you know, when they're zero to four, it's like there's there's nothing more pure than a. I mean, yeah, there might be a little a, a hell you, yeah, but they're not like vindictive right. or doing shit in out of spite. Yeah, you know? but once they get out of four, it's like, look, as a dad or as a mom, if you didn't get in that quality time, it's you didn't. What, what do they call it? Animals like imprint yeah. on their owners. It's almost like that connection. There's there's something missing, right? Like especially like a dad and a daughter. Mm-hmm. You know, just using an example. Just there's, there's you, know, like you grow up and you meet them women that are just wild, mm-hmm. and you're like something happened with your daddy. Yeah, you know? daddy issues. <laughs> daddy issues. <laughs> something he might he might have not have been there for those zero to four, and then he showed up when you were ten, right? And was just trying to buy you stuff to make you happy. Yeah, it don't work. No, you can't buy that. Those can't buy time, four, man. Yeah, those zero to four. And yeah, you know, I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I watch you a lot. You know, it, you know, you got your father, yeah. and then you have like fatherly figures, right? And that's not me calling you old, yeah. by any means. but I am. I'm, but I, I, we're, I, do, we're, I watch all you veteran drivers. Right. The, there's some guys that do things that I'm just like, that's a piece of shit. Yeah. But then you got guys like you, you know, just like taking notes, right. especially as a father. I'm the father, but my kids are still young. Yeah, you know, yours are getting to that point where if you're not locked in, shit can go off the rails yeah. fast. Or your kid can turn into a damn criminal. Yeah, or you know anything. The repercussions are high. So I'm, yeah. I'm watching and I'm taking notes. And yeah, you do work, you know, sometimes six days a week. Yeah, but you've put in that foundation. So. Your kids are also watching. Yeah. Their kids aren't really aren't the greatest at putting their thoughts and emotions into words, but that comes as you get older and you learn. And they're, they're watching. And that's like you said, you watched your dad busting his ass. Yep. Mine too. He, yeah. he worked at this place called Griffith Microscience. Yeah. And he was, my generation, we were called latch key kids. Yeah. We rode the bus and we had a, a house key. Right. And you got off the bus. You went straight home. Yep. There was no deviating from the schedule. You stayed there until an adult got there, and then you could do whatever you wanted. Right. But uh, my dad would work, uh, I want to say it was like 7 p.m. to whatever the fuck in the morning. Yeah. But you barely saw him. Right. You know, slow and then, you. Yeah, you, Like you say, he put that time in, and then he was able to get a better hour right. schedule, you know, and then you got to see a little more of him. Yeah. But it's you watch and you you learn like you know i wish i had more time with my dad but at the same time it is nice to have this nintendo right you know? but you got to find that you don't want to you don't want to you don't want to work those hours the 
those crappy hours, not have the time with your kids. And then when you do, when your kids do see you, you're passed out on the kitchen floor drunk. Right. Like, shit. Right. You know, because they're, again, they're watching. You know? Yeah. And a lot of work that we do, it, it is hour demanding type. It's weird hours. I don't want to say weird hours, but it's long hours. So you're, you're, the gap's different than most folks. And when you're not working, you got to be with them. You use all that. You put in that time to get that money so we can go do stuff. Right. You know, what are you going to do? You're going to go home and just relax. Like, oh, well, me and the kids probably going to try to do this and do that. Yeah. But yours are getting to the point where they're wanting they don't freedom. Have you got yeah. one that's one yeah. that's freedom, and you got the other one that's most likely wanting to hang out with his buddies. Yeah. You know, playing TV. Right, right. And, uh, you know, and, and that's what I, I guess I was referring to earlier is I put in the time early on and when they were younger with them build coaching the, the team. The yeah, if you don't build the foundation, they got nothing to build on right. later. So that's why the availability now is, you know, now we're building, I'm like eight years out from retirement. So, and uh, now I'm building my foundation for retirement, mm-hmm. you know, and that's that's what we talk about. As, and, and I've talked to my kids all the way through. You know, even with my wife, we dated for like four and a half years because I was like, you got to see what I do. I said, it's not like, you know, I'm not going in at eight and I'm not coming home at five. I go in at a certain time, I might get home sometime. Right. Yeah. And uh, she was cool with it, and she works as hard as I do. And uh, she's retired once and uh, from the uh, government, and then she uh, now works somewhere else. It's like three and a half days, away, which was our goal. You know, she I didn't want, I want, she was planning on working from home, but this opportunity just showed up on the front. Door. You're like a team. Yeah, you know, that's that's where you know when you if you want to build a good relationship. Um, marriage wise, I always said, if people said, How long, how did you able to make it? Because you know, divorce rate in our line of work is high. It's like in the 80s, just in general. Yeah. And then you take a demanding job that right. doesn't have solid, I punch in and I punch out at this time. Yeah. It's, I got to be there at this time. I'll you know, see you when I see you. And then sometimes it gets heavy. Okay. And who knows? Yeah. And we, but I'm coming home. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be at home. <laughs> That's why I kid. I, all my buddies ask me when I was coming up. You know, I didn't have a lot of hot. You know, I, I didn't get off. I didn't get this. And we can let like that do. My time's demanded on the front end. So on the back end, when I'm off, I'm with my people. I said, That's it. Whatever they want to do. I was coaching teams. I was hanging out. I was at games. One of the things I always told my kids, I said, I'll be there at something. I might only be there. I might have to swing by on my lunch break and be in uniform. Yeah, and uh, my kids grew up with that. They would see me at all their events at, in my uniform. Yeah. If I just stopped by for four, and people would, you know, the, you know, you got those you know, dumbass people that make comments like, "Oh man, you only hung out for like an hour." It's like my kids saw me making an effort to be part of his life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I said everybody has a choice they can make. I could have chose not to even swing by. Here. And stuff like that, but I'm, I am so you know, fuck off. You know. And I'm that parent, I always stay. You don't know to me, just yeah, you don't, know, you don't like, know my struggles, yeah, you don't know my back strength. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it hurts a little bit, but once yeah. it gets warm, it's warm, <laughs> I'm like a Buick, you gotta warm up a little bit. Well, god, yeah, but yeah, we was, you know, uh, like my kids and they play sports, and, and my oldest one, <laughs> and uh, I always laugh about my youngest one, he you know, he played soccer all the one of those coaches was doing it. If you ask me, I'm like, ah, let's we'll see. And uh, those coaches, he was doing really, really good. They were high on them. Played club, played school, all that crap uh, and stuff. And I, and I ain't, I'm not one of those parents. Like, if you want to spend thousands of dollars playing club ball, congratulations. That's great. We did it. We spent money. Um, Farm wasn't quite that much. We played in small clubs. And, uh, but he, uh, he gets to high school, right? Soccer kid, you know, played football through Pop Warner and stuff like that. <laughs> so it's like football, man. like that's great, man. It's good to keep you in shape for soccer. You know, you get knocked around a little bit, be good for you. you. Play goalie, so it's kind of a high stress position. You know, you're either hero or zero. Exactly. So big yeah. responsibility. Right, and he's mentally tough for that. A lot, lot better than I thought he would be when he took on that responsibility playing goalie and stuff. But he's hilarious though. He, uh, but yeah, he started high school, and that's why I, I try to encourage parents. Like, look, because your kid starts this path doesn't mean they'll finish that path. Because when they get to high school, they start making 
kind of decisions for herself. So, uh, and, get burnt out. yeah. And for me, it was more, I, when coaches would call me, Hey, why didn't you come out for, I was like, look, bro, my kids choose what they want to play. If you want to talk to them about it, fine. That's cool. I'm great with it. But with me, if they choose, they want to play it. Like, but here's my only rule. You start, you finish. I don't care how bad it is. If you sit finish the whole fucking season, you're going to finish. You're going to be I said, we don't start and finish. Yeah, you're going to be there to practice. If, you, if I find out you're not giving 100%, then we'll run together. We'll run after practice. How about that? That's what I told my son. He's, same deal. Yeah. I said, look, if we sign you up, you know, first of all, you got to do something. Yeah. You know, whatever it is you pick. Now, if we sign you up, you don't like it, you're still going to be at every practice, sure. be at every game. And, and me and your mama don't care. If you're the best, right? We 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 demand two things. That's attitude and effort. I can't. I don't want you out there with your lip poked out, yeah. dragging ass. Yeah. Now, as long as you're running and trying, like I said, you don't have to be the best. You right. you ain't got to even score, no. no matter what it is. Football, basketball, baseball, you ain't even got to score. But damn it, if you ain't gonna try, that's right. You know, and it's I said, and you need to learn how shitty it feels to lose and you need to learn how it feels for people to depend on you you know and if you can when i always tell my son like when, when he would lose at something like uh, he was in karate for a little while karate's a little different because it's one-on-one yeah you can't point the finger at nobody no, it's, and uh it, it's the same way i used to wrestle when i was little and uh and when you would lose i, I would cry yeah because you just want to win so fucking bad right and uh and i tell him you know, he would lose. I said, you know, remember this feeling. Yeah, it fucking sucks, and you you can't do nothing about it. That dude whooped your ass, and it's fine. You know, you try. You know, I said, but remember how bad it hurts to lose. If, if losing didn't hurt so bad, winning wouldn't feel so good. You know, but if you want to win, you got to be willing to put the time in. You got to be willing to do what that kid's not willing to do. You know. We'll be shooting basketball in the backyard at 9.30 at night. And I said, I can guarantee you right now, there's only a few kids that are in their backyard shooting right now. And you're one of them. So, and I gave him the ultimatum for middle school. Because wrestling's in his blood. Yeah. And his, uh, my brother-in-law is multiple times state champ. Wow. Which I mean, he's high school. He's yeah. Like two months, but he was a beast. Yeah. Like 123 pounds. Oh, wow. And uh, a bulldog. And, uh, and I told him, it's, it's in your blood. You know, with me, my dad would, didn't want me losing weight. You know, we would wrestle and they're like, we need you to cut to get down to this weight class. My dad was like, if anything, he's going to be moving up. Yeah. You know, so I have to play football. And, uh, but uh, I told him, I said, look, you either, when it comes basketball season, there's two sports you can choose. And it's basketball and wrestling. And when you tell him on the surface, you should be a wrestler until your blood, he's like, I don't want to wrestle. He just don't like getting roughed up. Yeah. I was like, well, one, most people don't know what it feels like when somebody puts their hands on you. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. if you're in public and somebody grabs you, most people panic. Yeah. You need to get used to that feeling, exactly. you know, especially as a, as a boy. And uh, so I said, you either going to be good enough to make the basketball team or you're going to wrestle. Yeah. So well, you got to get out there and start working on that jump shot. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. And I like what you said, you know, my mother about being the penalty. That's what that's what I use sports as for my team. It's just balance of teamwork. It's it's a life lesson. You know? That's that's how I looked at it. Was, look, you're gonna have to learn to perform with people. As you get older, you know, yeah, you might own your own business, but you still gotta perform with people. You gotta learn how to perform with customers, you gotta learn how to perform with the team, you gotta learn how to perform with subcontractors, no matter what you do. It might just be me, but uh, people that grow up playing sports, team sports are good at uh you know whenever you meet somebody like typically like us yeah like if somebody approaches us and just wants to start talking right we can we can like alter how we talk to for that for that conversation to flow yeah now some people you walk up to them and they you're just unapproachable right okay like god they got a dick yeah but if they meet us like, they're pretty cool yeah because we can like almost like morph yeah 
you know, we might not be that guy that's like, hey, man, here's my number. Hit me up. Yeah. But it's like, how are you pretty cool? Yeah. yeah we can hang out. It's like a flow. Right. And I, I think that comes from teamwork. Yeah. Or like you said, being part of a group. And then when you work, you know, typically if somebody thinks about us, then he's a good worker. Yeah. Because, you know, like we might be out there by ourselves, but it's all a part of a, of a team. Yeah. They're just separated. And if, if you don't hold up your end, they're going to have to send somebody to come help you. Yeah, and you, you know, won't be when you get that phone call, unless you just got killed. Yeah. You know, it's like, dude, they sent them on suicide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, oh, man, you only had this. What the hell have you been doing? Yeah. Oh, man. I had a rough night. You better get your shit together. Yeah. This, this is the kind of job you can't be drinking on. No. You got to perform at a high level all the time. Right. And you won't be that guy. And that's what uh, that's what team sports really and, and in my opinion, you know, that's, I think you can, and you can always tell when you're, like you said, around people who's, who's had to work as a team. You know, when they come in, you can tell people who's uh, been coddled their whole life yeah. you know, and stuff like that. And I got some friends, man, their parents, and uh, I love them to death. They're good people, but they're poor children. God, they're just, you know, you can only coddle them to a point when life is going to punch them right in the eye, bro. I mean, it's just going to fucking blitz them. And if they're not prepared for it, you know, I, and people always, uh, one of the comments we always got as parents is like, y'all are pretty open kids about stuff, like talking and stuff. Like I said, well, I want them no matter what the conversation, they can come talk to me. Yeah. They might not want to. Mind. Yeah. Is they get older, you know, like as my 19 year old down there, you know, and doing his thing. And I told him, I said, listen, here's the deal. I don't care what happens. If you go out and you get drinking, something happens and you, you there's not any questions. Don't There's not gonna be pissed. Yeah. But it's all I said you I said once I get you, I said my biggest thing is that you get back home. Yeah. I said you get back to where we need to be. And so far it's worked like a charm. Because I started early. It wasn't like it just when he got to ten, it's like oh, I'm hitting this and yeah, the shit out of it. Yeah. I said, No, I said, you know, you, I said, we talk all the time. We try to. And there's times, guys, like, you know, I posted something the other night about, you know, a kid come in and I, I you know, you work, it's 8 o'clock, I was getting in. And uh, I was sitting down and I was going to watch Peaky Blinders because we fucking can. Peaky and, Blinders. <laughs> no, Peaky Blinders. I was sitting down to watch it, rewatching that love program. And, uh, and uh, I was uh, putting my headphones on because I'm old and dead. I can't hear in my living room. My TV speakers. I got like, you know, the subwoofers and the sound bars and all that shit. Still can't hear. I'm gonna watch like Jesus Christ. It's like a movie theater. <laughs> exactly. She bought me these like, you know, headphones, wireless headphones to listen to. It's great. And I put them on. They come in. Man, he's like, yada yada yada. He's telling me about all kinds of school stuff. He's smart. Like he's really smart. It's like number twenty something out of seven hundred kids. They I mean, he's okay. like, you know. And, and uh, which I don't know where that come from. My, his was mom, that came from his mama, and uh, but it did not come from me. He's talking about all this stuff. He'll go. He's like me. He'll just ram. And once he gets talking, when you get him going, you're gonna be there. So I knew. I just cut. Him. Does he like to stand up? And yeah. Articulate. Oh, man, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And uh, now he's been in the gym, so okay. he's been working out a lot because um, of football. Like I, you know, I explained to him high speed. That's your big things, high speed and strength. I said, so you got to you got to put on some weight, bro. If you want to play, I've seen playing as a safety more than a wide receiver, but that you know, he's got to go his own path. And the coaches, whatever they decide. And uh, but anyway, he he comes in there and he's you know he's got to get a little you know chest Shoulders. starting to film out you know and stuff. He's 14, 15 okay. testosterone hairs growing. No, look. And he's like, you know, you'll see him. He'll put it together, <laughs> flex a little bit when he's talking yeah. and stuff. And I'm like, damn. You back. Back. You want this old man straight. Yeah. And then his brother walks in. He's ah, yeah. I mean, he's the biggest dude now. Yeah. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, He says he's 230, 245. He's a big kid. Yeah. And uh, he comes in. And, and I know his brother, he just kind of takes <laughs> Sit down, son. Yeah. Jake Sometimes I hear him. And he's like, "You got something to say?" Ah, right? he does. He, yeah, he does. He yeah, that's a good thing about him is they, you know, they hate each other. They hate each other in the right yeah. ways. So, and it's beautiful watching him work like that. We try to build a team environment. 
there. So we all have to work together to make it work. If dad's going to be away, you guys are responsible for that. And uh, if something is wrong, don't tell me three days later. You know what I'm saying? Tell me right now. You know, if it's something like, oh, man, I'm not holding the wall, or if it's you got something wrong in life. You know, if we, we start with a little thing. It's like when they were small, it's like, okay, I went and drew on the wall. Come to me. I'm, a, I'm not going to split it. I'm just, I'm not an explorer. I, I, as I learned parenting, I got better at it. Now, I feel like it builds up. Yeah. But if you can diffuse it right. before it starts to pile up, right. that will prevent that explosion. But yes, me and the wife are working on keeping the open line. Like you said, no matter what it is, you can talk about it because chances are me and your mama probably did something worse Yeah. in that same category. Yeah. So if you can, if you can just tell us now, right. and get it out of the way, instead of having us find out a few days down the road, and it's just gotten worse, yeah. it's going to be much better for you, you know. And, Consequences you know, will be a lot better. Yes, you know, and I learned that from my dad. As far as now, as far as emotions, that was tough because it's just a different, you know, a different generation. Right. You know, men were supposed to be hard. Yeah. You were supposed to be tough. I did. Right out there. Get some calluses on your hands. You know, you know, don't you start crying? He would laugh Bad. because I would get angry. Yeah, you know and that kind of have bad repercussions yeah. later in sports because yeah. I would get hurt and we'd be ready to fight. Yeah, you know? but uh, but as far as our kids, you know, when you try to get them, uh, say like getting pulled over when I was a kid, the best thing to do was turn your ass around and right back home yeah. and show them that ticket. Yep. Don't it don't matter if you head into a girl's house, you know, or a party, and you'd be way better off. Yeah. Just go ahead and get it out on the table now, because if it if you bury that thing and a month later, he finds out yeah, it's so much worse. Yeah, uh, it's funny. It's, it's so much tough. Serious. It sucks. And my but, oldest one, he's he's like the poster child for tickets. <laughs> Oh, I dude, see that big. What was he driving? Uh, no, well, he had a suburban. He had our old suburban. We bought it when he that bought last it. name on the window. Yeah, it's like, that's what I tell I know who that is. Damn poster board, man. <laughs> and he, uh, he, he was the problem with my wife grew up in the town, lived on Oak Street, man, and then uh, worked for the town for twenty six something years. Retired, so she knew everybody. Like she knows every freaking. We can't travel. We can't everywhere we go. We know she knows somebody from somewhere. So she, I told her, I said, God, you miss politician, politician. And uh, but anyway, that's what he told me. He's like, he get pulled over, and like, oh, she had a son. Yeah, yeah. He get one. He said, good thing about get one. I know at one time, man, because you know he cut off his mufflers and his. Um, oh God, it's so loud, so loud. And that's the thing, man. And they did it. And he had he had like six and. At one time, he said, oh, like $1,500 in the box. He was like, Dad, what am I doing? I was like, oh, what you going to do? You better start hustling. Now, I ain't paying him. Ask for some extra hours. Yeah. Dang. So he did. He was going up there, and he got all of them. He put a muffler on. Had one of his buddies put a muffler on. He like, had to cover that one. Got those all dropped. And then he uh, sweet talked a little bit out of one. And then they made him come to court, and they dropped it. And uh, come with some of that little politics mm-hmm. stuff. I don't want to say that they, you know, sometimes they teach kids that way, make them go through the process, scare them. Mm-hmm. And we appreciate, I appreciate all law enforcement that are here. Make you dress up, kind yeah. of show up get, all the time. Yeah, be responsible. Make you nervous as hell. Like yeah. you said, get down there, have you plead. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was laughing. Come on up to the booth, you know, and yeah. then she leans forward and talks to you. No. Yeah, we all do this right. We see you again. Don't be like, yeah, that's yeah, me. Make I'm sweat, bro. I know in high school I hit a guy one time in my car, I passed him on the wrong side. We had wide streets down Main Street. We lived on Main Street. Right beside us was a fire department radio shack. Radio shack was, you know, you know nobody know what radio no shack more. is. They no gone, more, but they was like an uh, electronic store, kind of like Best Buy, just smaller. And uh, beside us on one side is like the church, the parsonage, and the fire department. So like these folks were leaving on the fire too. Everybody, it rattled. You just rattle everything. But uh, I was leaving and I was running late for school. I lived in Block. I could walk to school faster than I could drive, of course. Straight line. I was going down the street and this old guy I was two miles an hour. I was passing on the wrong side. 
jeans. He turns into oh. like he didn't even see me. He just turned. I mean, you're not expecting somebody to chill. pass you on the right side. He lived right there, just side swiping my whole car. I left. You know, first I haven't driven very long. Left went went to school park. Went to school first home run whatever it is I'm sitting there. I was like, I gotta go. I called him. He's like, you left to sleep. Accident. I was like, oh, God. This is like a town club, right? A smaller town. Any of these right here. I think Shaver. I think it might be the same perspective. <laughs> like two cops in the whole town. And, uh, I, my dad called him. He says, does anybody call him report accident? He goes, yeah, they told us. We just uh, we were getting ready to go to high school, have a conversation. Yeah. And uh, he says, if he wants to just stop by after school, I'm going to drag him out. Guy's kind of fine. He just wants you to fix his car. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how, yeah, my dad. If that was me. Oh, I'm oh, making sweat. Yeah. No, they took care of everything through practice. So I, I got out of school. My dad was there and took me in, and I talked to him. And uh, then I had to go to football practice. And they like, you know, about 30, 40 minutes gap between school and practice. Go to football practice. I shouldn't have put in practice. Right. Coach and him was tight. Our, you know, we had track. Our practice field was in the middle of the track. So I ran. What you for lunch? We're about to find We're going to find out. <laughs> Leave your helmet on the side. Uh, you know, we just got through running bag drills. You know, everybody passes the bag. And uh, we run those. And it's like, I'm getting ready to head to the locker room. And I see my dad pull up on the car. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm like, <laughs> so, yeah, I ran, pew, ran, pew, pew, ran. And this is lower country, so it's never cold. It's all the time. Right. It's like September. So it's it's like four hundred degrees. Man, I tell you what, Jethro. What's that, Bill? I'm madder than a damn hornet in a coke can. What's going on, brother? And I got these damn tree stumps in my yard pissing me off. What you gonna do about them? I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to call Morgan Stunt Removal. How's that work? Well, you just pick up your damn cell phone, give them a call at 803-517-4592. They'll come out and give you a free estimate. Numbers are hard. Say that one again. Well, I understand that. 803-517-4592. Ask for Scotty. I did. We're here to give you guys some laughs every week, but we want to promote you, especially small local businesses. If you like the show and like the promos we do, we can spread the word about you, your company, or your business. And it's free. Send us your info and promo idea via email at twobandab at gmail.com. That's T-W-O-B-A-N-D-A-B at gmail.com. Make sure to follow us on Spotify and share the show with your friends and even your non-friends. Dustin, you have a sexy radio voice. Yeah, I was I was made for this. Oh, so smooth. So smooth. Like Clayton's flat. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I remember one time I was, uh, when I got my car my senior year, we went to the side of it because I was going to college. And I kind of shit showed up. Was really, I needed it like a dependable car because I was rocking the Mercury Topaz oh, for a yeah. mid-size sedan, which was my mom's car. Yeah. There was a choice between that and the Celebrity Station Wagon. And that was Station Wagon had to see the pop up in the back to yeah. face traffic mm-hmm. coming towards you, which was a genius design to Way, way it's fun if you were a kid. Yeah, it's like, ah, I'm getting run you know, on road trips. Oh, yeah. We're Wait, back here flipping people off. Yeah. Yeah. You little asshole. Yeah. <laughs> Go by. Road a window down. I'll yeah. whoop you later. Yeah. <laughs> so nowadays they just pull a gun on me. So. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, that's, that's what my neighbor was telling me. We went out <laughs> this weekend and I uh, went up to try that Hobo's in Fort Mill. And a great place. Wonderful place. And I uh, went up there. There's a brewery across the road. We went over there while we were waiting. Come back over and he, he was telling a story like he's from like uh, South, uh St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, and uh, they, uh, <laughs> this cat man is like, he says, this, you know, in St. Louis, you just flip everybody off. They cut you off, you just drive us out and flip off. Yeah, pretty much. He said, that's just common. You know, it's like waving at people. Yeah. And uh, he said, man, he said, I was in Charlotte and was coming down 49 from there. And I flipped this guy off in the white family. And uh, he said, that dude pulled a gun on. He said, but the problem is we're in standstill traffic. 
no. He said, so I just sat there staring at him. He said, one day I'm going to get shot. <laughs> I was like, dude, he said, I was like, dude, he said, I am. He said, it wasn't my best move. He said, dude, put the gun up. He's trying to get away. So he ended up diving off into the Palisades. The guy pulled the gun, dove off into the Palisades and get away from it. He thought he was falling. He's like, dude, just nasty the traffic. He said, we pull up. he'd pull up a little bit. I'd have to pull up beside him. Jesus. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Is like, that serious? Yeah, I was like, dude, this he said, well, they cut me off, so I just flipped them off. You know, I just pulled up, so I fucked them. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was it was pretty, it was a, he's a trip. It's true. Like, they're one of my neighbors. Ones I hang out with a lot, they're from, uh, one's from Florida, and they're from Florida, and the other guys are from, like, St. Louis, and the Kansas City, St. Louis area. So, and they're hilarious. So, it's really cool. Anyway, he's, he's always in the South. With that kind of stuff, but yeah, that's what he's telling me. Pulling the gun, it's like, oh, yeah. but yeah, back to the tires and uh, driving. I got that car, and I remember one time my dad was like, Pay me, was like 247 dollars car payment. I'm like, Oh man, which this is what year, though? Yeah, this is like 93. Okay, so nice, pretty stout. So, yeah, it was pretty big. And uh, my dad's deal was I had to pay a portion of it while I was in school, so I had this gig, I cleaned church. I did that, and, I, and one time I come pulled a short because I took a girl out and spent a little bit more around. I thought I was trying to be a pimp. You know, of course. Not. I got you. And uh, I got you. took her out and come back. I was like, $25 short. My dad was like, well, give me the key. So I was like, that was his deal. You want to pay Damn. it? I drive it. I'm going to drive it out. I'm going to drive this little. It was an Eagle Talon. Yeah. Like a Miss Missy Eclipse. Oh, it was, you know, it was a nice car. Uh-huh. It was nicer than anything I ever had. And, uh, but anyway, they, <laughs> This and uh, so I went on a pool boat. Shot a pool with me, my twenty-five dollars. Now this is a minister, so you know what I'm talking about. And this is a place we hung out. Oh, yeah, everybody what they call them PKs. Yeah, PKs. You know, yeah. Like, Watch out for the PKs. Yeah, they like, were. Talking about preacher kids. You know why preacher kids are worse? Oh, did they get sheltered? No, no. no it's because they always had to play with deacons' kids. Oh, so, that's who's always playing with deacons' kids. Worse. Yeah, they're in the back smoking, come back close at the preacher for spending ten extra dollars on pews, but oh, wow. you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. I, I, I love growing up around ministry because it was, uh, you got to see all phases of people, good, bad, and all that good stuff. <laughs> and you know, you said something last week in the podcast that I found good about balance. You know, people hear you say something or hear and they're like, "Oh, I had to go to church." And, you know, I don't know about all that. I like what you said. There's a medium balance. Yeah. You know, you gotta find a balance because you know, I know some people that are great, you know, great Christian people. And also I know some that are great on the outside. Right. You know what I mean? So and that kind of stuff. And uh, I always keep you with some everything about especially when it comes to the kids. I hear parents and then kids are just like and I'm like, bro, I saw it come, right? I mean, like, you knew it was coming. Not that I'm some example of parenting, man. I'm learning as I go. <laughs> By all means, whatever your mama says <laughs> is what I say. Yeah, exactly. There's don't, no difference. Don't in. let her tell you no, and then you come to me, because then we both going to be in trouble. Yeah, and, and I'm going to put you in the next, you know, Just kidding. You're going to get me in trouble. Yeah, we Everybody's cool. in trouble. If mama ain't happy, we all ain't happy. <laughs> I call you just talking about bullying in 2022. I, I, I have this theory, and, and it's, it has to be right. It's, uh, it's, I call it the car rider line versus the bus kid. Okay. And, uh, you know, if, if you live in our area, we have, like, ridiculous car rider lines. Back down the highways and stuff. And, see, I grew up with buses. Because not, not that many kids ride buses. Right. And uh, my kids. I mean, my kids ride all the way up to they can drive to school until I felt comfortable with driving to school just because I'm, you know, what we do for a living. You, you got a little more uh, to prove as yeah. far as driving goes than just the average. Yeah, it looks good. It got in between the lines. No. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I kid, I said, man, listen, if you, and that's what I told them, kid, you know, they come home about stuff that happened on the bus. And, uh, I said, man, I learned to fight on the bus. That's one of the places I, had, I learned how to how to take jab and fighting clothes 
quick. Yeah, quick, you know, you got to punch them right in the nose so, and get that out of the way fast because you, you didn't have a lot of space to work in. And nobody wants to fight after you get hit in the nose. Yeah, nobody does. You're trying to call a timeout. <laughs> Time out, time yeah. out. Over there, oh, and I'm ain't no more timeouts. And uh, <laughs> then we had uh, a kid about it all the time. I said, you know, if you didn't survive the rise of people with your mom and those, off being on the bus, and you left, just beat all to death, because you know, they were roasted. Just roasted beyond belief, you know, because everybody can't get up, walk down, and slap the person who's roasted. Um, so that's what I was kidding. I was like, man, that's the beauty of it. I said, look, and I had, you know, I've got a friend, and like, my kids will never ride the bus because of that. I can't trust you. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's right. And uh, don't take this the wrong way. It's kids are going to listen. Yeah. And uh, I, don't, I mean that in the best sense possible. Because yeah. For the real world. For the real world. I said, because when he leaves the nest, and or she, he or she leaves the nest, and they go out the world, bites, man. I mean, it's going to it's gonna come right after you. There's no, like, rules in the real world. I mean, or that you prepare your kids for reality and yeah. something you're talking about earlier, not talking about, and you can't tell them everything, but yeah. it's reality. And uh, that car rider line, man, and I ain't, man, if you take, if you pick your kids up at school, I'm not calling you assistant. I don't take that the wrong way. It, what I'm saying is there's some things that can be learned yeah. in different environments. You got to learn how to get roasted. Yeah. You got to learn how to be able to. We roast our kids in the house. Too. Oh, we. I mean, I have cost. My you kids can't get your feelings hurt. You got to yeah. be able to come back. My kids are looking. You know, as like when my my kids are brutal on kids during like school sports and stuff because they you say something to them, my kids would roast them. Yeah. I mean, just be like, that's what we do at our house. Trash I mean, talk. Like, yeah, it's like man, look, like my youngest one right now. You know, he's like, said so he's been in the gym, he's working out. Right, comes in and I'm all. He's like, man, God, you put all that work in the gym. And that's it. That's all you got right there. What, what you bitching? Like, saying it about well, that's, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's got to be, that's almost like a gym in itself. Yeah. You've got to learn those quick comebacks. Right. And the ones that, you know, there's like low blows. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, bro. Yeah. Like, you can't say that, that, dude. Yeah. But it's like, you know, what you ugly. You know, it's yeah. easy stuff just to be that banter, that back and forth. My the two my oldest and youngest used with each other all the time was because my youngest is he he's he's pretty smart and the oldest is a hard worker, but he didn't do well in the classroom. So the youngest always said he's like, all right, Jacob, it's fine. I'll give you a job when you get older. So, <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, oldest would be like, <laughs> and his always his comeback is, I'll whoop your ass. Yeah. Like, you know, but he would say, but. But he's like, I'll keep going. <laughs> that's that's when you know Jacob's reached his point. Right. He's like, Yep, I'm bigger than everybody else, so I'm just gonna use brute strength. Right. That's his. He he's the bull in the china shop. My youngest one is the uh, sword. You know, because he slices and dices. Because he's just see, he, he, I guess he's smart as shit. That's, that's it. He he is. He thinks around what you're thinking. And so, playing chess when you're uh, playing chess. Exactly. <laughs> and the oldest one, he is. Uh, he he will argue with you to the point where he realizes, yeah, I'm out of my depth now. Just I'll I'll take you as Washington. Yeah. So that's his. Uh, what is it about what I call it old man strength? It's it's <laughs> uh like uh teenagers and young men have muscles. Yeah. But it's almost when you're a man, it's like tendons. Yeah. It's like uh this astronomical strength for about five ten seconds. Yeah. And it when it when your daddy gets his hands on you, you get it's like good lord, like that's, that's strength you've never realized. But ten seconds and it's gone. Yeah, but that's all it takes. As it once you grab, that's what my my youngest says all the time when I, when we start wrestling, and I grab him, he's like, Jesus, or, or I grab you know you know all the little points to grab him, <laughs> and it hurts because your daddy sticks his thumb right between your shoulder <gasps> blade and stuff like that. And I'll do that, and he's like, it's, it ain't even fair. I was like, then one time I hit him with a stool. Or something like we were fighting. Right. We was on the ground. I reached over and grabbed this little step stool and bonked him in the head with it. He's like, That's not fair. I said, There ain't no fair fights, bro. It's a street fight. I said, man. Well, I'll hit you with whatever. I said, I ain't grow up like that. Ain't no said, referee. Yeah. yeah. Who who's who's gonna tell me not to, bro? Yeah. <laughs> who's gonna throw a flag? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, and my oldest one, he is my uh my uh I guess you say, like I said, he's a bull. But he's the biggest, hardest kid. Yeah. I mean, he'll do anything for anybody. Um, that's why he's always been that way. He's got a big heart. 
and uh, that's how his emotions are. But he's explosive. You know, he's very uh, he's very emotional. When he loses it, he don't ever. But when he does, it's, yeah. it's over time. Watch out. Yeah, it's, it's and I tell people that you know I've warned all his friends when he's growing up because every t- it seems like every time we went from like elementary, we went from elementary to middle school. He had to throw hands. It was always it was like his christening for school. Gotta get it out. Yeah, it was funny because I remember middle school I got called and uh, they were like, "Yeah, he begged the kid." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> And I was like, um, who started a fight? And they're like, well, you know, the other kid took a swing at him and he finished it. And then when we got to ninth grade academy, the same thing. It was mm-hmm. one of his buddies. It was the funny thing. They were going back and forth at lunch, roasting each other, and the kid squirted milk on Jacob. So Jacob, you know, he didn't react. He squirted milk back on the kid, kind of evened it out. Mm-hmm. And uh, when Jacob got up to walk back um, to get leave to do, Try to suck a punch it from behind. What? And yeah, so it didn't go well for the young man. And uh, it was like two and out. So he punched him. And uh, Jacob was a brute, man. So <laughs> that two piece in the biscuit. Yeah, man. He crumbled. <laughs> and I, I just knew we were going to, you know, he was going to get it because now we're in high school. It's just, the rules change. So. And kids but he worked out. He did his time. He did his, you know, in school suspension and out school tension, whatever. But, you know, and, I, and that's what I told you. I said, you said it earlier, get it out of the way. No. I saw something the other day. I'm going to butcher it, but uh, if I could lock it in, it's, it's a good quote. And it said that everybody has a beast inside of them. Mm-hmm. The ones you should worry about are the ones that have tamed the beast. Yeah. Because if, 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 like, when you meet somebody like us, we're real friendly. Yeah. You know, we're going to try our best to be friendly. But if you just so happen to release the beast, it's it's not a good thing for, right. for anybody. Because if, if you can tame the which you know, if if you've got any uh friends that are uh fighters like UFC, you know, MMA guys, most of their day is spent in a gym uh, essentially trying to kill each other. Yeah, you know, they're trying to choke each other yeah. to death. But at the point of, oh, my God, I could kill you, you tap and I let go. Yeah. So it, they get that out of their system. So when you catch those guys in a public setting, like a bar or a party, they're some of the nicest guys you ever meet. Because yep. they've already got that out of their system. Yeah. But if you just so happen to poke and prod and you get in and they open that door, it's trouble for everybody. Right. So it, I can't remember how they said it. Everybody has a beast. Don't don't mistake my kindness for for me being soft. Yeah. Because if you can let the beast out. Kind of like the uh, saying of uh, I'd rather have a, a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Yeah. yeah. So and kind of I've heard it before said that, you know, teach your kids to be monsters and teach them how to be controllers. That's Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, so, yeah. Jordan yeah. Peterson yeah. the man. Teach them how to be monsters and teach them to control. Yeah. Control. Yeah. And then once they learn how to control it, because they always, you never know the situation you're ever going to have to be in, in a close quarter situation mm-hmm. where you might have to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. And uh, kind of, I've got a bunch of friends that are uh, former military and uh, some of them are special forces and stuff like that. And it listen to, to probably the, kind of quiet. Yeah. Reserved. Easy going reserve. No, I, you can watch them in group settings. Mm-hmm. They're different. They you look know. around a lot. Yeah. They have a they have a Checking different exits. mentality on how they approach things, and uh, and I question them, you know like one good I've got two friends one was complete special forces dropped off in jungles type stuff don't talk about it we just know it from back when and then the other one was kind of just a uh, particular job military type thing and uh, you know my question always is to every time I run up on about that was in the military I always ask them like in a situation something broke out what's your angle Mm -hmm. like are you and the best explanation i got was from a guy that was a navy seal um guy and he told me he says you usually have two types of people you got a guy who just loads everything in he's he's not he's defending what he has family guy you know he's um got forty thousand rounds he's got you know seven guns and he's gonna hold his ground he says there's benefits to that, and there's all the drawbacks from that. And then he says, then you got the guy that's uh, a bug out guy. He's gone. 
He's mobile. He said he's moving. He's got a bag buried 40 yards away. And uh, the more he can move, the more he that. But it's just a, a training thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you got the, you know, band-aid bullets and beans guys. And then you got the guys that are just want to just keep moving. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, and I always find it very interesting how they react in public situations and stuff like that when things are, you know. It's cool to pick their brain. It is because they have a whole different sense of perspective mm-hmm. on things. Than you it's do. like a blessing and a curse at the same time, right. I guess. Right. You can't, you can't, you just relax, man. Yeah. Like, you, see, you with family. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but. You don't understand. But. Yeah. You know, if some shit goes down, <laughs> it's like, I'm ready. Like, he's the guy you look to. When shit pops off, you're like, what's he doing? Yeah. Which way is his aim? <laughs> yeah, let's go that way. I served with some guys at a campus yeah. uh, for a church, big, it's a big multi-campus church. And uh, one guy was always like that. He was always like, oh, man, you know, I did this and I did that. Mm-hmm. And there was a guy on there that was in the military, too, never said anything. Right. You know, did his job. You knew he was going to be there. He was going to be there. If you told we starting at five, he's there at four thirty right. in the morning. I mean, this was a camp. We had to break it down, mm-hmm. set it up, all that in the school. So uh, four thirty, me and him's there because I was kind of leading the thing and uh, the operations deal. And they would uh, he'd be right there. I pull up halftime. He was already there, you know, ready to go. Mm-hmm. Couldn't couldn't out working. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm one of those guys, man. I don't have a lot to bring to yeah. the table, but my thing is, I will I will try to outwork mm-hmm. everybody around. And uh, not try to show myself, but I'm going to be, you know, I'm just that guy. If you're going to give 100%, we're going to give 100% mm-hmm. together. And But he was so reserved and so quiet. And so at one time he let it slip, and he's not one of those guys that did it. And uh, we were having kind of other dudes get on the last nerve, you know. He's just always, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I was like, God, Jesus Christ. He looked at me and says, listen, he said, they didn't do anything. All that shit he's saying, yeah. there's no way. Because if a guy did all that, he's not going to tell you. Mm-mm. He's like, I did four tours. I was like, four tours. He's like, I did four tours. Four tours, not like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He says, so, he says, guys who go, I think it's best to put it how he said, he said, guys who go to war don't really want to tell you about it. He says, if they were in it, he says, they won't tell you about all that. Yeah. He said, we saw, I saw things there's no need. You wouldn't even be able to comprehend it if I told you. Yeah. Unless you're there. He said, that's why there's a brotherhood inside. That's what I was going to say. It's probably, you know, there's probably about three or four guys that if they were in a closed setting, they might talk about things or, you know, oh man, you were there too, blah, blah, blah. But just like a, uh, just a civilian, as they would say, it's not You have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was laughing. We were at uh, the, whatever, the Yorkville marketplace thing mm-hmm. one night a few weeks ago and uh we were out there a buddy of mine he was he's ex-military he was with us and ran into another military guy that i knew they didn't know i knew him from you know being the you know guy around town and we were talking and they got talking and then the next thing you know they're off in a corner yeah you know smoking a cereal uh-huh. or reminiscing yeah. having a couple of drinks and i thought it was so cool i'm gonna be a fly on the wall yeah you know i just want to hear but you know you know there's boundaries to yeah. that because i don't have a clue mm-hmm. they're talking about all these different things and, and i and i and that's you why know, they I use so sure. many acronyms yeah exactly <laughs> right and uh, but it's cool because you had a, even like well, what we do for a living right. we go somewhere else because our company's you know international it's uh you, there's a brotherhood inside mm-hmm. of it too that you know what that guy's going through right. you know what i mean you know you see his face that's, that's like, the wave yeah when you're driving yeah. you're driving down the road and you pass somebody you don't even know when you get the finger you're like i know you're struggling brother. yeah well, i know exactly <laughs> where you're going oh but shit. yeah but yeah they uh that's it, it, it is man that's I, I, I always kid you know when my kids about that kind of stuff it's like dude you build you'll build your team around you but in the end of life you'll count on one hand how many people stood with you mm-hmm. through everything right i said always be i my, my comment is to them when they choose relationships i said choose choose the people i said be open to everybody i said but there's a small group of people that you can tell everything to mm-hmm. i said because they'll use it to their advantage in yeah. some situations but the other ones they'll be there man i said I can go living all over the place. I got I got my file. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 
and uh, I can resort on them on anything. And uh, even when shit pops off, and I don't know what to do. And now, you know, when my dad passed him a year ago, that was one of my guys. You know, I could call him when I'm having a bad day, kind of decompress on the way home. So now, you know, knowing he ain't gonna be yes. Yeah. I had to have Jason call me talking about this and right. this and this. He's yeah, gonna, and gonna, gave good solid advice because you know. that's 70 years of wisdom. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, wisdom is nothing but doing it wrong and learning how to do it right. Yep. That's what we, I used to think, man, how does, you know, you know, you go over there to your grandfather's house or your dad's house and they can fix him. You know, you go over there, oh, the sink's might, clogged. might not be the right way. Yeah, but it's fixed. <laughs> like, your sink gets clogged. Yeah. And, and they just pop, 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 and it's ah, fixed. Yeah. And it's done, or a toilet, or whatever. Back in 73, uh, the same yeah. shit happened. Yeah. That's and there's, a, and that's what my dad told me once. He's like, bro, he says, it's not that I'm any good at anything. He says, it's not. He says, I just did it wrong mm-hmm. before. And I don't know what not to do wrong. That's what wisdom is, is you've learned what not to do wrong because you did it. He says, that's why people mess up these days. They're too scared to do anything. They're, they're, they're cowards to life. Mm-hmm. He says, in reality, they just want to sit in a box and never let anything affect them. He says, but you got to. Yeah. He says, you got to go out there and then you got to just, you know, punch life right in the mouth mm-hmm. or nose. I prefer the nose. And uh, <laughs> that's what I always tell my kids. I said, you hit them square in the nose, you hit them fast. I said, yeah, hard <laughs> and fast. And I know, do not go home and look at me and say, you know, gee, I do not give good parenting. I said, so I can get you to 19. Mm-hmm. Okay, right now, because that's all I got. You know, I got 19 years of parenting advice. And some of it's good, some of it is horrible. I'll be honest with you. You know, some of my advice, like, I'm not, don't tell your kids to go out there and punch people in the nose. Right. And I said, that's probably going to now, in this day and time, it's going to cause you problems. Yep. Lots of issues. But with me, you know, that's, that's what's kind of how I went through. My oldest one would, my youngest one, I don't think I'll ever throw mm-hmm. He just don't have it in him. So I say that, and he's getting testosterone running through there now, so it could all change. He's very competitive. That's his. That's where he gets his out, his mm-hmm. sports and uh, stuff like that. But, God, yeah, it's crazy when you think about, you know, that kind of stuff. And you're at that, you know, stage, like, where you're being 10. Mm-hmm. You know, you're we're kind of – I'm on the end of the spectrum, and you're kind of right in the middle of Just the beginning. Going. So, yeah. I got, but, two, I got two girls. Right. Soon to be three. I wouldn't even know what to do with girls. You don't? No, I don't. I mean, I'm just being honest. I have my friends who have girls, and I watch them like melt down over like a hair bow. Mm. And then one time, I never forget, it was in the kitchen one time when I was a kid. I think it was like six. Just completely lost it because she couldn't find her hair bow. And uh, I'm over there, and she's screaming at me. And I'm like, because I raised boys, you know. And I was like, yeah, you need to find your dad. <laughs> well that's probably a good way to end this podcast we've been going for a while which is probably the most wholesome episode this podcast will ever brought the old guy in yeah <laughs> man. that's gold i hope you start something for real man yeah, maybe um, we'll get we're willing to venture out and see what we got yeah and find an audience for you know some of my you could bands. do like a just sitting by yourself or you know who knows um i've seen some where people get people to like call in and not necessarily talk on a live phone call but it's almost like a like a um uh confession line yeah like oh man i was having a rough one today blah 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 and then you can be like uh uh what he'll do is he'll be like hey man it's it's uh jason calling from clover south carolina and then he'll pause it and he'll be like, thanks for calling in, Jason. How you doing? And then he'll play it. Yeah. And it'll be like, hi, ah, man. I, you know, I got a lot weighing on my mind. I, I've been dealing with it. I mean, you know, I, I can't stop drinking. Yeah. You know, and then he'll pause it. He'll be like, well, I'll tell you what. And then he just like, gives advice. Right. You know, which is, you know, an avenue. Yeah. It There's, could be all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. That's why, like, like I said, I'm going to come in and see how you guys set things up mm-hmm. to do things. Once you're, once you're willing to, to actually spend the money, you know, even it might not even ever produce any kickback, Yeah. but it is kind of cool to, uh, capture these conversations. Like, yeah. uh, I've been wanting to bring my just family right. in and, uh, cause it's, I don't know if you ever had a chance, uh, but like to really, my dad never really talks about his childhood. Yeah. Uh, he lost his dad when he was 12. 
which, you know, he always talked, you know, I always, I didn't have a dad. He said, I always had a daddy. You right. know, I was like, fuck, oh, so it's gotta be rough. But yeah. Like I've always wanted, he probably won't want to do it. Yeah. I can guarantee you, but it would be nice to sit him down and talk about his childhood. Cause like I said, his emotions weren't something you, he didn't really have, uh, a guidebook to go off of his mom raised five boys oh wow and that was in the i think he was born in 64 62 yeah. so times are different yeah and she didn't have time for bullshit no <laughs> they were military yeah so okay she only had so much to go off so so emotions he's not really good about talking about emotions no and uh but i've wanted to sit each and every one of you know close friends uh family yeah and just get like maybe two to three hours of just what we've been basically doing yeah so That'd be you great. Know, who knows what you end up doing but it's 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 easy it's not terribly expensive yeah i mean we probably actually bought more than we should have but i mean you see it's bare bones yeah and you can do it anywhere you want it's portable that's great i and like what cares, you got who going cares on who listens yeah i mean hopefully we'll have these to listen to whenever yeah you know years. well you're putting something out there man mm -hmm. so you're doing more than some average folks that's right. just you know trotting through life so that's mm -hmm. that's the thing is getting a voice out there even if it's but you don't know who you might hit that day mm -hmm. they needed to hear something in there that's you know even if it's you know, you're, you're just joshing around about stuff that it could help that you know or just you know like you said help them through one more day mm -hmm. and that's 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 my kind of you know the reach i've always wanted in mm -hmm. life was like you know one more day that's or all we're gonna, we're gonna fight one more day you know what i mean just fight one more just day keep pushing yeah that's that's always been mine you know that's kind of always been my philosophy we always kid as was well going to tattoo on myself at some point was uh, just one more day yeah and uh that's uh i ain't never got to that point I'm not, I don't know, it's my, I don't know, I always tell myself I'm going to, I'll probably, that might be the name of your podcast, might be, one, one more day, one more day with Jason, Nick. yeah, <laughs> and that's, that's the route, you know, that's what I want to do, um, as far as that goes, because there's, you know, there's avenues for everything, yeah, and uh, there's an audience out there, and not out there trying to, you know, change the world, mm -hmm. just maybe change one more day, mm -hmm. so, all right, man, well, let us know, uh, and we'll blast it out on here yeah. to, to the seven people that listen to this. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> seven more than I reached the day That's before, it. right? Yeah. That's it. All right. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Listen, depression and suicide are no joke. All of us know someone or know someone who knows someone that suffers from depression and has thought about harming themselves. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline has people waiting and willing to listen and talk about whatever it is that you might be going through. Call 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. If you're a veteran, you can press 1 and you'll be redirected to a local VA resource. If you don't want to physically speak with someone, you can text HOME to 741-741. That's H-O-M-E to the number 741-741. And look, if no one's told you, you're beautiful and we love you. If you enjoyed today's episode, give us a five-star review, a like, and a follow on Spotify and social media. Today's episode is brought to you by James, Dustin, and me, the producer, Layton. Music provided by David Cole, and our sponsors are Morgan Stump Removal and Flowers of Charlotte.